students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Organic Chemistry module. This is video number 33 and it's the last in the little mini series that we've been looking at on addition polymers. So this is our final polymer that's based on ethene and we're going to be looking this time at PTFE. So as before, um, the key words are structure, properties and uses. And because we're modeling and comparing, the modeling process is obviously something that we'll be doing in the classroom. I haven't sort of prepared lots of different models for you for these videos, although I may uh, ultimately um, add a few of these in just so we can look at some of the differences. Um, but the key thing here is that we can relate structure, property and use for each of these key monomers. Now this time we have got tetrafluoroethylene. So if you think about this name, um, then hopefully this will start to give you a little bit of an idea about what the structure of this monomer might be and how it might look like when it's polymerized. So hopefully tetrafluoroethylene is something that has conjured up that idea of tetra meaning four, fluoro meaning fluorine, and, and ethylene is obviously our base as we've used it for all of the other addition polymers that we've looked at to this point. Previously, we had three hydrogens and then the fourth hydrogen being replaced with a chlorine for PVC and with a benzene ring for polystyrene. This time, all four of the hydrogens have been substituted with fluorines. And of course, this makes a little bit of a difference both to the electronegativities, but also the overall polarities. So you can see when we're drawing uh, our polymers this time, um, we can see that we have this breaking of the double bond, the linking that's going to occur to different monomers, but this time no hydrogens in the structure, they're all fluorines. So this is going to create a little bit of a change in the uh, shape of this uh, polymer, and also it's going to affect some of its properties. If you're looking at questions from previous uh, HSCs, Polymers was an important part of the previous uh, curriculum, um, but the key addition polymers that you were looking at were the high and low density polyethylene, the PVC, and also polystyrene. This wasn't part of it. It really only um, appeared uh, in the industrial chemistry module when we were looking at our uh, membrane process for the production of the sodium hydroxide. So there will be a little bit there, but we didn't really focus on the structure of the, the polymer there only the fact that it was um, the identity of what was being used. So this is uh, a little bit of new stuff where you probably won't find as many questions from the past uh, that specifically focus on this polymer. That being said, we still should be able to find some uses for PTFE. And as I mentioned, one of the key uses is in uh, polymer membranes. Often which are used uh, as filters, either to differentially uh, allow the passage of certain ions to come through or to um, stop the passage of others. So uh, for water purification processes, for example, PDFE may be one of the uh, polymers that's chosen to be used. Um, it's also, as you can see here, has some applications in uh, plumber's tape. It's uh, lightweight, again, it's it's fairly brittle, but there's a bit of flexibility that's built into this with, again, dipoles created between carbon and fluorines. And they're all carbons and fluorines, so therefore they overall will cancel one another out. We won't have polarity in our molecules, but we will have this dipole-dipole um, interaction, which can occur between the different um, chains. Uh, in order to um, hold them a little tighter together. And of course, as we know, the intermolecular bonds or forces perhaps is probably better so we don't get ourselves caught up with chemical bonding um, is what affects the melting and boiling point. So when the strength of these goes up, so does the uh, melting and boiling point. Uh, this too is a polymer that's fairly durable. Hopefully you're starting to see some of these uh, consistent things coming through in terms of the properties. One interesting application of PTFE is to a uh, particular surface known as Teflon. And this is what is used for nonstick um, cookware, like fry pans and things like this. Teflon is a, it looks like Teflon, but it's Teflon with an N, um, and it's, it's used to coat. Um, uh, cookware to reduce the sticking. So 
it's insoluble in water, it's not going to wash off, it's also going to um, repel to a certain extent oils and things that are going to uh, potentially damage the cookware and allows that sort of nice slippery surface for which is good for cooking. It's opaque, it's not transparent, so hopefully one of the things you'll notice in, if you think about something like uh, some of the other polymers we've looked at, particularly um, the version of polystyrene that's used for DVD cases or versions of uh, polyethylene that's used for cling wrap or plastic bags. Each of these is very transparent. This one much more opaque. It does not allow light to travel through it in the same way that some of the other polymers do. So again, another little list of properties and each of these linking through to the actual um, uses that we make of polytetrafluoroethylene, which means you have another row of your table that you can now complete. So we have now gone through the four different types of monomers that we use to produce four different types of addition polymers. So in your table, we've now covered all of the addition polymers, ones that have as their base the ethylene monomer, or the ethene monomer, and of course one or more of these hydrogen uh, hydrogen atoms being substituted um, with other atoms or groups of atoms. And they change the properties and hence the use that we make of each of these different polymers. But in the first of these polymer videos, we looked at the fact that there are two different ways to polymerize um, different types of substances. One way is addition, the other way is condensation. And for the last two entries in our table, we're going to have to shift to condensation polymers. And we'll do that in a future video. Thanks for watching.